present today. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? In verse two, are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does a tree seem heavy you are called to bear? Yes, I think that really sums me up sometimes when I think about, do you know what, you mentioned Job as well. Job, how could anybody bear what he had to bear? <laughs> It's only because our father gave him the strength to do it, that he could do it. And he was proving to the spiritual world, he's proving to the whole of the world, the flesh, everything, that he's in control. We have no need to fear anything. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Yes. Does the tree seem heavy you are called to bear? Yes. That's when I have to say, Father, give me the strength to keep <laughs> living keep living not that i've got problems like most people have got around the world i've got a very easy comfortable life but it's all relative to where we are it's all relative to where we live yes it's all relative to where we think how we think so um we all have a lot to bear and i despair my friends I despair for my, well, I despair for my family. I despair for my friends. I despair for myself sometimes that we don't actually know who our father is. That's mm. how I feel sometimes. And I'm despondent sometimes. But do you know what? It's all going to get sorted. <laughs> it's all going to get sorted. Um, when you asked me to speak, I thought, well, what am I going to talk about? And you actually opened the doors on many things this morning. Um, you're a hard act to follow, Pastor. You're very hard to follow. You speak so well. You do speak really well and you speak um, with a passion. I love it. I love it. And um, so we'll, you're very hard we'll, to follow. We we'll, we we'll give Yahweh all the glory, all the honor, all the praises. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not cutting into your no, no. admonition. No, I, I don't mind. What, your you, words what, you, are, what your you just words said, what you just said, the the guy that is working on Yahweh is not God. Um Auto House. They are publishers. They are working on that booklet now to a book. Now he made a comment, and another person in that organization also from US made a similar comment. I was talking with them, and after I finished, they said, wow. But all I told them is Yahweh is doing what he's doing. Because when they saw that, they said, how that from my profile, they see me as somebody who has been in public service and all that. How did I crisscross into the ministry? And what we they were hearing, they have not been hearing it elsewhere. So I said that is the praise to Yahweh because it's his doing. And one thing I will thank Yahshua, what he didn't do when he was going to Jerusalem, the Jewish leaders started stopping the children, the young men, and all the people that we are trying to stop, I mean, trying to praise him. They were, these leaders wanted to stop them. Yahshua said, look, because they called him and said, stop these guys from adoring you, from praising you. Yahshua said, if they will not do what they are doing, Yahweh will cause stone to rise to do the work they were doing. So I thank Yahweh that Yahshua didn't do that. Otherwise, by now, no human being will live. So all power belongs to him. All glory belongs to him. All honor belongs to him. We are just vessel in his hands. He can call up stones. He can call up anything to do whatever we are doing. It is by his grace. And that's why I'm very, very happy. Yahweh bless you. Go on, sir. Okay, yeah. So, um... When you mentioned it to me, and uh, I thought to myself, what shall I speak of? And the first thing that came into my mind was speak about wisdom. 
wisdom and discernment, how they must go together. And then when I was really pondering again and again, I uh, changed my mind again. Um, we speak so much in the ministry about the Exodus, the first Exodus, the second Exodus, and how I look forward to the second Exodus. I think I mean, that's yeah. really going to take place and very soon. And preparation's what we're about. We have to prepare for that second Exodus. But when I've been reading with regards to the second Exodus, what's at the end of the second Exodus? What is at the end of it? What is at the end of the second Exodus? And at the end of the second Exodus, when the Messiah comes back, when Yeshua comes back, he will come back and we will get another, another phase. We will get the seventh thousandth years, the millennium. What is the millennium about? I find that quite fascinating and I read about the millennium. And um, all the woes and all the troubles we have, when you read about the millennium and who we're going to be within that millennium, we pray that through Yahweh's grace that we are there in the millennium that we are the kings and priests. We are working with Yeshua. He is telling us what to do. He's ordering us what to do. That is going to be a great time, and I find that is very, very exciting. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk a little bit about the millennium and uh, who we are and what we're going to be doing. Um, As far as I can see, there must be a reason for the millennium, and that is that Yahweh has made promises to his son. Yahweh has made promises to his son, to his people and all of creation, which he will fulfill during that time. There are five promises which are pertinent, which are obvious. So I'll just read out those five and put in a little bit of explanation there as well. How I'm speaking is from a teaching that I um, I agree with. Uh, I'll be interested if everybody else agrees with it as well. And with regards to the teaching then that I'm going to read out, there were promises made. And the first promise was made to the Israelites. Who are the Israelites? I mean, I'm going to go off, 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 off the script here, but... We are Israelites. I believe that we are Israelites. I agree with you, Pastor, 100% that we are Israelites and that we are scattered around the world and that we will be rejoined at the second Exodus and we will end up in the land of Israel to the promised land. And there, that's where the millennium will take place. And let me read promises to the Israelites. He has promised that he will gather the land of Israel the remnant of Israelites who accept Yeshua as their Messiah at the end of the tribulation. We read that in Ezekiel 36 and Zechariah 10. He will pour out his spirit upon this remnant, greatly expand their numbers in the land and make them the prime nation all the world. Not just the prime nation, everything will be prime about that, that time in Israel. They will serve as an object lesson of the grace and mercy which he bestows upon those who turn to him in repentance. Without repentance, we won't be there. We have to repent. And I pray so often that my friends and I learn how to repent and repent all the time. They will serve as an object lesson of the grace and mercy which he bestows upon those who turn to him in repentance. And I read from Zechariah, and it will come about that just as you were a curse among the nations, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you that you become a blessing. Zechariah says the blessings of Yahweh upon the Jewish remnant will be so great in those days that, and I read again from Zechariah 8, 10 men from all the nations will grasp the garment of a Jew saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that Yah is with you. I think that is 
We have to recognize that we are Israelites. That's so, so important. When people say to you, what do you believe? Yes, I'm a believer in the covenant, the covenant way, but I am an Israelite in that belief. And we read that in Romans. We read that all the way through. Promises to the remnant, the second promise. Relates to a promise which Yahweh has made to those people. He has promised that the redeemed in the Messiah will reign over all the nations of the world. This promise was given through the prophet Daniel in the following words. Then the sovereignty, the dominion and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom and all the dominions will serve and obey him. That was from Daniel 7. Serve and obey him. That's what it's all about now as well. In the New Testament, Paul repeated the same promise in the simplest of terms. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. You can read that in 2 Timothy. Yeshua also affirmed the promise in his letter to the church of Thyatira when he wrote, and he who overcomes and he who keeps my deeds until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. We read that in Revelations 2. The rod of iron, I believe, is a scepter that has been in Judah from the time of Jacob. Genesis 49. It is the law passed down through the line of Judah and has never left the land and will be ref will be fulfilled by Yeshua HaMashiach. And that is when every knee will bend to him. He will rule them with a rod of iron. Now, that's not a rod of iron that's going to be beating people. But it is the rod of iron is the law. That is what the rod of iron is, is the law. And if you're in obedience to the law, then you will not you will not feel the wrath. Speak of this and also again, the rod of iron is the law and still some will find this offensive and will still want to rebel. Even in the millennium, people will be rebelling. When, Yah when John was taken to heaven for a visit to the throne room of Yahweh, he heard a heavenly host singing a song that contained the following verse. Now has made them the redeemed to be a kingdom and priest to our Yah, and they will reign upon the earth. He's not just going to have us there floating around in little clouds or with wings on. We're going to be there working. We're going to be there working with the with Yahweh, with Yeshua, his son, preparing, preparing for the whole eternity. That's what it's going to be about. This promise that a remnant of a worldwide dominion is going to be fulfilled during the millennium. That is what Yeshua was referring to in the Sermon on the Mount when he said, Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek will inherit the earth. Yeshua will reign as king of the world from Mount Zion in Jerusalem. The redeemed and their glorified bodies will help him with his reign. That is us helping him with his reign by serving worldwide as administrators, judges and spiritual tutors to those who enter the kingdom in the flesh and to their children. You can read so much of that in Daniel 7, Jeremiah 3, and Luke 19. The next promise, the third promise, is promises to the nations. Yahweh has promised that a time will come when the nations will be provided with their greatest dream, namely worldwide peace. This has been an international dream since the beginning of time, but it has proved to be impossibly elusive. That is when the flesh is coming in. Man always strives for himself. Press conference after peace conference has been, sorry, peace conference after peace conference has been held. Multiple treaties have been signed. World organizations have been formed. Yet war continues to ravage the nation. We will have war until the millennium comes. Yahweh has promised to give mankind and the earth a rest from its wars. But that peace will not come until the Prince of Peace returns. Only then will the nations 
They will hammer out their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And only then will we realize a dream of a world where nation will not lift up sword against nation. And never again will they learn war. We'll never learn war again. It will never take place. Yeah. Those of us who have been soldiers in the past, those of us who are going to be soldiers in the future, because their wars will continue. My own family uh, have been soldiers. My grandson is a soldier now. The time of war has got to end. I, I, I really, the fact that I was a soldier and I had to do a job. I, I fully understand what that is about, and it's so painful. But anyway, I won't go on. He has promised that he will flood the earth with peace, righteousness, justice, and holiness. The earth will be full of the knowledge of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. We read that in Isaiah 11. Even the bells on the horses' bridles and the pots in the kitchens will bear the inscription, Holy to Yahweh, holy to Yahweh. These glories of peace and rest and righteousness will be fulfilled during the millennium. What a time it will be. Yahweh made a promise to creation as well, which he will fulfill during the millennium. He has promised to remove the curse which he placed upon the creation due to the sin of man. He has promised to deliver the creation from its bondage to decay and to restore it to its original beauty, balance and peace. Do you know what, can you imagine what that is like? The original beauty. I had a, uh, a vision when I became a believer. And if I can just describe that. I remember in the vision, I walked towards a wall, but it was a step. And I put my arms on the step and I levered myself up and there was a veil. And I lifted the veil and I looked underneath and then I could see a, such a beautiful place. Trees, grass, flowers, and the color was fantastic. Mm. This is a vision, but the colours were fantastic. There's something that I can't experience here now. Mm. I, I've never seen them greens and those yellows and those pinks and blues. I've never seen them again. Not in real life, but mm. one day will come. I believe that was a vision given to me of the future, mm. of how beautiful it will be. Each one of us will be radiant. <laughs> radiant. We'll be will radiate love. Do you know what love is, what it's all about? Love brings a beauty to life. Yes. It brings a beauty to life. The carnivorous animals will become herbivores. The deadly animals will cease to be poisonous. The plant kingdom will flourish and produce bountifully. The land of Israel will be so radically transformed that visitors will proclaim in amazement the desolate land has become like the Garden of Eden. Ezekiel, we read that in 36. In the millennium, all the laws will be obeyed. And those who do not obey will be dealt with. We can read that in Zechariah 14. If any of the peoples of the earth do look up to Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahweh Almighty, they will have no rain. That is part of the rod of iron. That will take place. We get away with sin now, but you won't get away with it in the future. Those of us that have been brought back in spirit to work with Yahweh, then we will actually, we will never sin again. But those who are not in the spirit, those who are still in the flesh, will want to have that carnal, carnal nature. Promise to Yeshua from his father. The most important reason for the millennium is that Yahweh is going to use it to fulfill the promises which he has made to his son. Which he has made to his son is the most important. He has promised Yeshua that he will be glorified in history and not humiliated by the false worldly narrative. 
But the world thinks that it can humiliate, and they humiliated Yeshua on the cross. Did they? I don't think he was humiliated. He was pained. He was broken. Mm. He wasn't humiliated. And I think that right in there by this author is, I don't agree with, but I can't see him being humiliated. He was so, so sad about what had happened to him and how, anyway. The Bible say point blank that Yeshua will return to manifest his glory. Yes, he will. Yahweh has always promised that he will give Yeshua dominion over the whole world and that it will reign over the nations from Mount Zion in Jerusalem. We read that in Daniel 7, Isaiah 2, Zechariah 14. Psalm 2 presents a good summary of these promises. It begins by surveying the rebellion of the world's political leaders against him and his son, referred to in the passage as his anointing, verses 1 and 2. It describes their contempt for the Almighty. Yes, they have a contempt. We can see, I, I look at it now on the um, television. I don't watch much with regards to normal programs. I watch sport and things like that. But even in, even in the, um, let's just call them the religious programs, even in the programs that are proclaiming and defending and um, a lot of them are actually blaspheming. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are blaspheming and they don't realise they're doing it, I think. But what will be the outcome for them? I don't know. But the psalm says that Yahweh sits in the heavens and laughs and scoffs at us. They can't. My point about humiliation, it can't be. Because Yahweh just laughs at them. It can never humiliate the creator of the heavens and the earth. The one that is set, that is totally, totally apart from all of us. Apart from all of us. He is the glory. Uh, but the, palm, the psalm says that Yahweh sits in the heavens and laughs and scoffs at them because he has appointed a day of reckoning when he will terrify them in his fury. That will be the day when he installs Yeshua as a king upon Zion. Yeshua then speaks and tells of the promise that his father has made to him. And I'll read that in Psalm 2, 7 to 9. I will surely tell of the decree of the Almighty. He said to me, thou art my son. Today I have begotten thee. Ask of me and I will surely give the nations as thine inheritance and the very ends of the earth as thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. It must be kept in mind that Yeshua is currently a king in waiting. Like King David, he had to wait many years after he was anointed before he became king of Israel. Yeshua has been anointed king of kings and master of masters, but he has not yet begun to rule. Yeah. He is currently serving as our high priest before the throne of Yahweh. He is waiting for his father's command to return and claim all the kingdoms of this world. That, I believe, is not far off when Yeshua will return and he will return and many, many people, like we read in scripture, will hide. They will try and hide under the rocks. Yes. They will try and hide everywhere. But yeah. you know, we will be there and we'll be clapping. We'll be cheering. Yes. And we'll be hated by the rest of the world because of that. When we see him coming, I mean, whatever lies are going to be told about his return, whether he's an alien or he's a monster or whatever it is, we will be rejoicing at the return of the mighty, the almighty, the power and the glory. There is a final reason. There is one purpose for the millennium that should be noted, I believe. Yahweh is going to use the millennium to prove to man once and for all that Satan's religion of humanism is bankrupt. It's a lie. His humanist way is a lie. Man cannot live with man. We can only live in the spirit with man, each other. That's the only one.
All humanists, regardless of their political or theological labels, are agreed that the source of evil in the world is external to man. They view evil as rooted in the corruption of society. They believe that the resolution to all man's problems can be found in societal reform. Man, man, man. Take as an example the attitude toward crime. They believe society is the root cause of crime. All we must do to eliminate crime, they argue, is to provide people with a guaranteed job that will supply them with sufficient income so that they will be able to live in a nice suburb, a nice house. But such reforms do not transform the basic nature of people. Going back to the beginning about man's carnal nature. In the ghetto, a man will pay £25 for a prostitute. In the suburb, he will chase his neighbour's wife. In the ghetto, he will throw a rock through a window and steal a TV set. In the suburb, he will put on his three-piece suit, go to the office, manipulate the computer and embezzle a million pounds. You do not change people's basic nature by changing their environment. Changing their environment simply converts them into more sophisticated sinners. The humanist view is absolutely contrary to scripture. The word of Yahweh teaches that the source of evil is rooted within man's fallen nature and that it is man and not society which needs to be changed. So all these activists, all these communists, all these fascists, all these socialists, all these people working on man, sorting out man's problems. It will never happen. Man cannot live with man. Yahweh is going to prove this point by using the millennium like a great experimental laboratory. He's going to place mankind in a perfect environment of peace and prosperity for a thousand years. Hallelujah. Satan will be bound. Righteousness, righteousness will abound. Mm. Yeah, at the end, when Satan is released, most people will rally to him because they resent the law. And when the law and resent the law, and when he calls to the nations to rebellion against Yeshua, they will go to him. The millennium, the millennium will prove that man needs this, not a society, but a new heart. Evil comes from the heart. Evil comes from the man of the heart of man. What is essential to a father's master plan is the fulfillment of all the promises that Yahweh has made to the Jews, to the Israelites, the nations, and the creation. It is also essential to hear his determination to prove that the source of all evil is the fallen nature of man. We can never be good because that's how society is so corrupt and that the only hope for this world is Yeshua, not political reform. Most important, the millennium is essential to Yahweh's purpose in glorifying his son. He's going to manifest the glory of Yeshua before his redeemed saints and before all the nations of the world. All of the ends will re of the, sorry, all the ends of the earth will remember and return to Yahweh. And all the families of the nations will worship before thee. For the kingdom is Yahweh's and he rules over the nations. Posterity will serve him. It will be told of the Almighty to the coming generation. They will come and will declare his righteousness to a people who will be born that he has performed it. You can read that in Psalm 22, 27 and 31. Yahweh is faithful. The creator of this universe is a covenant making Yah, who is faithful to all his promises. He cannot lie. He cannot forget a promise. He is faithful even when we are unfaithful. Just as he fulfilled all the promises relating to the first coming of his son, he is going to fulfill all those that relate to his second coming, including the promise of a millennial reign. 
Many in the assemblies and churches may be ignorant of his unfulfilled promises. Others may have forgotten them, but Yahweh has not. He, int he intends to fulfill every one of them. Every one of them. We are privileged to live in a time when we can witness Yahweh orchestrating the events of this world to the fulfillment of the promises in his, his master plan. Mm. Let me read in conclusion. Deuteronomy 32, 3, 4. Ascribe greatness to Ayah. The rock, the rock, his work is perfect. For all his ways are just. A Yahweh of faithfulness and without injustice. Righteous and upright. All praise to Yahweh. All praise to his son Yeshua HaMashiach. And we pray that we are filled with a Ruach HaKadosh. That we can actually work together to be together. And blessings on all and every one of you. I love you all. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you so, so much. We bless Yahweh. What he has planned, his master plan in our lives by his grace, by his divine plan. It's my prayer that all of us will be partakers of the very new kingdom. The very master plan he has that will usher the millennium after the return of Yeshua. I pray that all of us we partakers of it. I love what our elders said concerning the millennium itself. Of all the points he raised concerning the millennium, particularly the reason for millennium will be showcased where Yeshua is going to come into this world for that stretch of millennium to show the world ordinarily how the world would have been ruled, governed. How the world, if they had followed the Torah, the covenant, the instructions, if they had followed it, it would have been like heaven or close or near to what obtains in heaven. Though we get this, we continue to you know, showcase itself. But then, Yeshua will teach us how to live good and glorious life. And the whole world will realize, oh, this is our enemy. Satan has been the enemy of humanity. That is to those who will turn around, those who will have knowledge of all the you know, ministry of Yeshua, the instructions of Yeshua, and people will glorify Yahweh. And at that time, I believe that during millennium, many will cross over. They will not understand because Satan will be caged for 1,000 years. So it's a great one. People will waken up. Their eyes will be opened. And they will know that Wickedness has been, you know, set as agenda to blindfold people, to fool people, to ruin people, to cause mayhem, because he has been serving as an opposition against Yahweh. At the end of the day, people will know the truth. Uh, thank Yahweh for you. I bless Yahweh. May Yahweh keep you, continue to strengthen you, continue to empower you, continue to enrich you spiritually, physically and uh, continue to give you grace for this journey. Amen. You will not look back, because he said he that lay hands in the plow and look back will not be fit. You will continue to put hand in the plow 
and you continue to move forward in Yahshua's name. Yes. And when the trumpet will sound, when Yahshua will return, all of us will enter the kingdom in Yahshua's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.